futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day. I wrap Stina Plin and Associates with your agriculture update for this Thursday, the 18th of October. And this is 2018. We're about 3.40 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So in looking at the markets and what's going on, you can see the stock market had a pretty big down day. The dollar up against most currencies in a fairly large way, actually. Uh, grains down and the beans really got hit today and hit hard. Remember, tomorrow's the cattle on feed report, so you make sure that your uh, systems are, or your positions are right where you want it, be it a systematic trade or whatever you're doing. In looking at the weekly area chart of closes in soybeans, and remember, this is the weekly chart and just closing prices. The market has closed over the 18-week average of closes, so we'll call that an upside bias. We can see how the market came from this 8 and 11 and a half area. Now you're sitting here at 863 and a half, so the market's up 52 cents since the most recent break low. If we look at a daily bar chart, and now this will include highs and lows and the close of everything, you can see how the market's been slipping back just recently, and the pattern is one that is in a downtrend. What do I mean by that? I define a downtrend as a market that's got lower highs, lower lows. That's the trend. Yes, you put filters on it and you decide does it meet all the rest of the qualifications. But what the swing line does is it, looks, it lets you see those highs and lows and you can label what the last high or the last low of significance was. And in this case, the most recent high that we had was yesterday. And if I step over here, you can see that was 889 and three quarters. The market cut out the previous low, so we've got lower highs, lower lows. When I put on the 18-day average of closes, you can see how the market went from the upper 100-day average and fell back to the 18. Just take a look at some of the recent videos we've done, and we were talking that the market could fail at that number because it was a combination of not only the 100-day average of closes, but the upper Bollinger Band. And what the market's done now is it's pulled back into neutral territory. Why neutral? I consider the 18-day average of closes the red line, the line in the sand. And when the market is way above it, it might pull back to it looking for whatever it's going to do when it gets under it. Often it'll pull into that area trying to figure out what it does next. So what we have right now is a market that has upside bias because the settlement price, the 18-day average, we're over it by a half a cent. The swing line is down. Should the market pick up further downside, it might want to go back to the lower Bollinger Band, but that's still far away from the 8, 11 and a half area. There's no magic, the market doesn't have to stop there, but it would offer a theoretical support zone. In terms of momentum, momentum is down. So we have a market in a downtrend with downside momentum. The only thing that's lacking is closing under the 18 day average to say it's a full fledged back downtrend. In the soybean meal, we still have a market here that's got higher lows, higher highs. Again, I want to point out how the market pulled back right to the 18-day average, right to the exact penny. Stopped on that decline. Momentum is down. Should the market take out 314.60, you leave the uptrend and maybe you set up a challenge of the lower Bollinger Band. The word is maybe. In the soybean oil, the market stayed over that 18-day average for a number of days, couldn't stay over it, and this is a, an interesting chart. We had what's called a bullish crossover yesterday where the 18-day average got over the 100. Instead of the market rallying, it decided to come down, revisit those averages, and close under both. We're not trending because you have a pattern of a higher high and a lower and low and momentum is down. But this could be a failure of a crossover if the market were to get under 28.63 and believe it or not, 28.62 is your lower Bollinger Band. So that's going to be an interesting area. In the corn market, my eye goes right here. And if you take a look, the slow stochastic reading now has a reading of 75. If I go back to yesterday, that is Wednesday, Tuesday and Monday, all three days had readings over 80. When you lose that reading, 
price and the 18-day average often make a run at each other. That's what I think is happening. Now, the first number it would have made a run at was the 100-day average. So one of the support numbers has been hit. It's always the closest of, and it's settled under it. Since it's settled under it, I'm going to say the 18-day average is in play. In the wheat market, I see sideways action just caught in the black dashed lines, and you can almost see the pricing itself going either side of this 18-day average almost consistently. You didn't hit it on this day, you didn't hit it over here, but all the rest of these days hit it. This is a market searching for direction, and it has little, if any, follow-through so far. The sugar market is the market that never ends. This is a market that's come from just under the uh, 1080 zone roughly, and has gone all the way up 300 points to 1387, roughly a 30% gain in price. I don't know how much higher it can go, and I don't care. Trying to buy it after that big of a move, not the game that I'd want to play, but for those that are just playing as a market, take the name off the chart. You've got higher lows, higher highs, and embedded reading. Until the market loses the embedded reading, this market gets bought on breaks, when it loses the embedded reading, the probability of price and the 18-day average coming together gets strong because of the size of the rally. The size of the rally also is something else. It's telling you this market left a bearish condition and that might have been it. The same in the coffee. You've got the same position running here. It's identical. Cocoa tried it, doesn't quite have it. It lost today rather large. Unlike these other markets that have embedded readings, there's a big difference between those and how this cocoa chart looks. This is just an overbought market that has an uptrend that might want to pull back to that 18-day average to rebuild, if you will. In the cotton market, we're getting some of the pressure as the harvest is underway. We saw the market pull back to the 18-day average. Today's low was 77.33, the 18-day average 77.35, and you close 78.05. So if you think markets don't look at those numbers, well, you may be right, but on the way up, you stop there. On the way, you correct it, came back, stalled. So I think it's something that traders do look at, and I think that that is the importance. In this market, we are in an uptrend. The bias of the market is up, but it's in overbought territory. Any reading over 70 is overbought. In the cattle market, as I said, you have the cattle on feed report. Downside target, if it wants to hit, it's 116.07 and a half roughly. Resistance, which you went back up to, the 18-day average of closes. Feeder cattle, this is the area that I'd look for the pros to take their profits. Why not? You're at the lower Bollinger Band, oversold, not embedded. You may get a pop in this market. And in the hog market, higher high, lower low. No trend, oversold, an extreme move in the market is what I would call that. I want to remind you, we have what we call our chart of the day. Now, let me explain what this is. I know that many of you watch and you understand Fibonacci and you like me to show it on a number of the charts, and I do for you. But this is another measurement tool. Actually, I'm doing a, a, a new video for you that I'm going to release in a few days called the Arun, A-R-O-O-N. Another way that you see in a market, is it trending or not trending, and where a trend may be coming to an end. This tells you where a market might go after a trend sets in. It's very specific. It gives you an idea of zones in the market it might be going to, and it gives you the probability with each of those what if it's going to hit it or not. So it's something to look at, and that's all it is. It's not a trigger to enter the market. It is a trigger to exit a market. You can call us. You can go to our website. You can click up here if you want at any point in time, and that will take you right where you sign up for our information. I'm I. Repstein. You have a good day.